In the male gaze. The male gaze. Male gaze. The female gaze. In the male gaze. The male gaze. The female gaze. The male gaze. Through the male gaze. The male gaze. Hey guys, it's me Anastasia, and today I'm going to be talking about the male versus female gaze because I think it is a very interesting concept and term that probably many people have come across but don't know exactly what it means. Before I go into the main purpose of the video, I think I should explain a bit about what the male and female gaze is. And no, I'm not talking about the LGBTQ community. I'm talking about the terms that are sometimes used to describe a scene from a movie, TV show, or actually anything around us. The male gaze is a term originally coined by Laura Mulvey, a feminist film theorist from Britain in her essay, Visual Pleasure in Narrative Cinema, that was published in 1975. She later critiqued the study, but I will get into it a bit later. There are many ways to interpret this term, but many people decide to stick to the feminist theory definition. The male gaze is the act of depicting women and the world in the visual arts and in the literature from a masculine heterosexual point of view that represents and presents women as sexual objects for the pleasure of the heterosexual male viewer. The male gaze has three perspectives in media, the man behind the camera, the male character in the movie, and the male viewer. These perspectives all add up into the phenomenon of the male gaze in one way or another. The male gaze in movies or TV shows is usually seen from the way the camera focuses on the woman's character. The camera focuses mainly on the woman's body, usually introducing the female lead by showing her legs and body before her face, as if it's just an addition to the main reason people want to see her, her body. Throughout the movies, it can keep focusing more and more on her body instead of the words she says and her face by using disembodied close-up shots and, as the take on YouTube said, making her feel less than a person than a collection of sexually exciting body parts. The male gaze usually changes the female characters to be positioned as an object for the male desire where her sexual desires and feelings are less important than the men's. As Jill Solway mentioned in her TIFF talk, what is the male gaze, guys? It's pretty much everything. Everything you've ever seen, it's most TV shows and it's all movies. The male gaze shaped the way media focuses on women today, and even movies that aren't meant to be filmed from the male gaze still have a similar camera shots and views because it is now considered the normal way to film. Many people, when hearing the term the female gaze, will automatically think that it is the opposite of the male gaze, but they aren't actually correct. While this term is usually used and was created to become the opposite or the somehow better version of the male gaze, it isn't exactly the opposite. The female gaze isn't sexualizing men and the male's body for the female pleasure, that is still a form of the male gaze just highlighting the men's bodies instead of the women's. The female gaze is an, actually an entirely different concept. The female gaze try to focus on the feelings and emotions of the person shown on screen. Movies like this are usually aimed towards women because that is what society thinks they want to see. As Catherine Hammond mentioned in her dissertation on the male gaze in the contemporary Japanese literature, the female gaze is used to look at narratives from a perspective that sees women as subjects instead of objects. This is a good quote that can help differentiate what the male gaze is compared to the female gaze. Circling a bit back to Laura Mulvey, as I mentioned, she is the first person to use this term in her work. While many people think that her study is an amazing read and view of the male gaze, which it is, she doesn't think the same. The male gaze study has since been critiqued by the author for not being intersectional enough, so though parts of it are still true, like women being used as props in a way, the idea that movies are only seen from a men's perspective isn't true, and it's not a valuable thing to talk about unless you're willing to talk about the men's race, sexuality, and richness. Laura noticed that much of the movies that she referenced to in her study were not only directed and made by men, but more specifically, white rich men. She understood that the male gaze doesn't only root from the misogynistic view of woman, but also the white gaze, which is another term sometimes used to describe the view of the world from a white person's perspective. And this, of course, flawed her study. 